Hey everyone, Adam Simmons here from DGTL Infra, short for Digital Infrastructure. As part of the continuing rollout of 5G networks in 2021 in the United States, the Federal Communications Commission, or FCC, is freeing up C-band spectrum for 5G use. C-band is mid-band spectrum, which is known as backbone spectrum, and is in the sweet spot for providing both good coverage and capacity for 5G services. Specifically, this means that mid-band spectrum has good transmission distances and fast speeds of 300 to 400 megabits per second. Indeed, all of the major wireless carriers, including Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile, bid in this auction. Elevated bidding activity clearly illustrates how important the wireless carriers view mid-band spectrum in the context of their 5G rollouts. Additionally, cable companies Comcast and Charter and future wireless carrier Dish Network also took part in the C-band auction. However, final bidder identities will not be released by the FCC until late February or early March 2021. Besides C-band, there is little future 5G spectrum coming to market in the United States over the next few years. Therefore, the C-band auction plays an important role in determining which U.S. wireless carrier will ultimately win the 5G race. The C-band 5G spectrum auction has been driven to record spending levels of $93.5 billion by the intense bidding from wireless carriers Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile. After 97 rounds of bidding, the C-band auction has generated $80.9 billion in gross bids, which are payable to the Federal Communications Commission, or FCC. And overall, $93.5 billion has been generated after including $12.6 billion of transition and relocation payments to the incumbent satellite operators of the spectrum. Indeed, this makes the C-band auction the largest spectrum auction in U.S. history surpassing even the most optimistic of expectations. Specifically, C-band in total has reached over two times the previous record spectrum auction spend from 2014 and 2015, known as AWS-3, which brought in $44.9 billion for the Federal Communications Commission, or FCC, at the time. Overall, if we think about the valuation for the C-band spectrum auction, the $80.9 billion of spending equates to $0.94 cents per megahertz pop for gross bids, which are paid to the FCC. And valuing the entire payments, which is the $93.5 billion figure, the valuation rises to $1.09 per megahertz pop of total spend. Following completion of 97 rounds of bidding, over 80% of total auction spend has come in the top 50 Partial Economic Areas, or PEAs, by population. Specifically, these Partial Economic Areas, or PEAs, include the likes of New York City, Los Angeles, Chicago, and San Francisco. Before jumping into our projection of the specific winners of the C-band auction, it's worth noting how the spectrum in the C-band auction is split up. So C-Band Auction 107 offers 280 megahertz of spectrum in the 3.7 gigahertz to 3.98 gigahertz frequency range. Specifically, C-Band Auction 107 represents three blocks of spectrum. A block, which covers 100 megahertz from 3.7 gigahertz to 3.8 gigahertz. Then there is B block, which covers 100 megahertz from 3.8 gigahertz to 3.9 gigahertz. And finally is C block, which covers 80 MHz from 3.9 GHz to 3.98 GHz frequencies. So now let's jump in and discuss DGTL Infra's estimates for the top winners of the C-band spectrum auction. Note that the specific attribution of winnings to a particular party are just estimates at this time, because the FCC will release the final list of winning bidders in about a month or two. So we estimate that Verizon will be the top bidder with $47 billion of total spending, which includes $40 billion of gross bids to the FCC to secure 140 megahertz of national average C-band spectrum depth. So why is Verizon the top bidder in the C-band auction? Verizon is the wireless carrier that needs the most mid-band spectrum. In mid-band, Verizon holds 84 megahertz of spectrum depth, which is much less than T-Mobile that holds 256 megahertz of mid-band spectrum depth, and AT&T that holds 93 megahertz of mid-band spectrum depth. 
Therefore, the C-band auction is crucial for Verizon to secure mid-band spectrum in order to ensure its 5G network has the proper balance of low, mid, and high-band spectrum. We anticipate that Verizon will secure 80 MHz of national average C-band spectrum depth in Block A, out of a possible 100 MHz. This will be free and clear for Verizon to use by December 2021. Moving to the second top bidder, which we project will be AT&T, with total spending of $22 billion, which includes $19 billion of gross bids to the FCC to secure 65 megahertz of national average C-band spectrum depth. So why is AT&T the second place bidder in the C-band auction? AT&T has more mid-band spectrum than Verizon, but the company only has just over one third of the mid-band spectrum holdings that T-Mobile has. So mid-band spectrum is important as it will add to AT&T's 5G capacity and ensure it can stay competitive with Verizon and T-Mobile in 5G. We anticipate that AT&T will secure the remaining 20 megahertz of national average C-band spectrum depth in block A out of a possible 100 megahertz. And again, this will be free and clear for AT&T to use by December 2021. The remainder of AT&T's Spectrum winnings will be in Block B and Block C, which will not be clear for AT&T to use until December 2023. Moving to the third top bidder in the C-Band Spectrum auction, which we project will be T-Mobile. T-Mobile will be the least active of the three largest wireless carriers with 12 billion of total spending which includes 11 billion of gross bits to the FCC to secure 40 megahertz of national average C-band spectrum depth. So why is T-Mobile the least active bidder of the three major wireless carriers in the C-band auction? T-Mobile currently has over 250 megahertz of mid-band spectrum with 150 megahertz of depth, specifically in the two and a half gigahertz frequency band. Therefore, the company's need for more spectrum in mid-band is not as acute as Verizon and AT&T's need. Indeed, T-Mobile is already deploying this mid-band 5G spectrum in cities across the United States, including New York City, Philadelphia, Atlanta, Chicago, Dallas, Houston, Los Angeles, and Washington, D.C. We anticipate that T-Mobile's Spectrum winnings will be entirely in Block B and Block C, which again will not be clear for T-Mobile to use until December 2023. The fourth largest winner in the C-Band Spectrum auction will be the cable companies, which we project will have $7.7 .7 billion of total spending, which includes $6.7 billion of gross bids to the FCC to secure 20 megahertz of national average C-Band Spectrum depth. Comcast, which owns Xfinity Mobile, and Charter Communications, which owns Spectrum Mobile, are bidding as one joint venture entity. In terms of strategy, the cable companies will be slightly different than the wireless carriers. Rather than spending to acquire a nationwide portfolio of Spectrum, cable operators will be more targeted on spending in the top 50 partial economic areas, or PEAs, where the majority of their wireless customers and traffic is occurring. Significant spending from these cable companies will show that they are indeed aggressively pursuing and growing their wireless business to compete with the likes of Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile. Moving to our fifth largest projected bidder, being Dish Network, we forecast that they will have $3 billion of total spending, which includes $2.7 billion of gross bids to the FCC in order to secure 10 MHz of national average C-band spectrum depth. Historically, Dish Network has actually been a very aggressive bidder in previous Spectrum auctions. However, Dish Network already has over 90 MHz of mid-band Spectrum, all of which they are not even using today since they have not yet built out their 5G network. Therefore, Dish Network will likely only purchase a modest amount of C-band Spectrum to help accelerate their greenfield 5G network build plans. The sixth largest bidder that we project for the C-Band Spectrum auction will be US Cellular, which will have 900 million of total spending, which includes 815 million of gross bids to the FCC to secure 3 megahertz of national average spectrum depth. Notably, in December 2020, US Cellular raised 500 million of debt for possible C-Band Spectrum purchases, so we do expect them to be active in some respect. 
Finally, rounding out a catch-all for everyone else bidding in the auction, we have a category number 7, which is Other Bidders. In total, we project these other bidders will have 770 million of total spending, which includes 677 million of gross bids to the FCC in order to secure 2 MHz of national average C-band spectrum depth. Other bidders include private equity-backed entities and smaller regional wireless carriers. For example, private equity firms Columbia Capital and Grain Management are registered C-band bidders. So that wraps up our analysis of the top 7 bidders in the C-band 5G spectrum auction. If you want to dive into the C-band auction results yourself, then we recommend going to FCC.gov slash auction slash 107 and clicking the results tab and then clicking the link FCC auction bidding system public reporting system, which is known as PRS. This will take you to the FCC's dashboard for the C-band auction. We will put both of these links in the description below so you can check them out there. Finally, if you came away wondering what this mid-band spectrum means, then I highly suggest watching our video explaining 5G spectrum called 5G Spectrum Explained Phones and Carriers. We'll put the links in the description as well. Additionally, if you want to find out if 5G is available in your area, then we recommend watching our video where we walk through the 5G coverage maps of Verizon, AT&T, T-Mobile, and US Cellular. This video is called, Where is 5G Available in My Area? We'll put the links in the description for this one as well. With that, we hope you have a better understanding of the C-band 5G spectrum auction for the wireless carriers in the United States. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.